everything old is new again. That's a saying. I don't know who said it, but I believe in it. Okay, you can look at fashion, music, cars, everything old is new again. That's the mentality that I use when I'm thinking of building my gear. Okay, that's what I subscribe to. I like the old things. This is a World War II satchel. And I've done a lot of research on it. Unfortunately, the ink's rubbed off, so I don't know what year it is. I'd say it's, you know, it's got to be 41 to 45. But in my research, I found that it's a satchel that was for demolitions. Okay. It's in beautiful condition. And it's a funny story. When I found it, I went through it, looked at it. I found this at the Goodwill bins. And I'm looking at it. And I said, well, this is definitely not American. Because of the way it was made and the colors. And I said, this has got to be German. So I was going to throw it back. And I said, well, let me do some more research. And I was looking at it. I said, what a beautiful bag. Right? How simple. And so I did some more research and I used a um, photo tool where you can take a picture of it and then check online. It references it. And sure enough, it comes back as a United States military World War II satchel for demolitions and charges. And I'm really into all the World War II stuff, anything military. So I started looking through pictures and sure enough, I see this on soldiers. You know, right away I'm thinking the D-Day scene in Saving Private Ryan. The guy's coming up and he says, you gotta move, we're here. Thinking that, you know, maybe this is what they carried to hold their charges in. But the simplicity is just what's beautiful about this stuff, okay? What don't you see here? What don't you hear, better, better said? There's no Velcro, okay? There's simple ties. This is all, you know, heavy cotton. Simple ties. So that's what I believe in. You know, if you look at this top here, I'm into, you know, buttons, okay? Because when you have a button, you need to secure whatever it is that you're securing. You know, here's the button. Listen to this. Okay, quiet, stealth, beautiful. Versus, if I jump ahead here, maybe I can find some. You know, versus this, that's a modern piece, Velcro, right? You can hear that. That's always been a pet peeve of mine, the Velcro. So I'm into old things. And I believe that everything old will be new again starting with the world, right? So these skills that we practice, if you're into bushcraft stuff, well, one day, all of this modern stuff will be gone. I believe that 100%. And the ways that'll work are the native ways, the native people's ways. From getting clothing by hunting, killing animals, getting the fur, eating those animals, so you have to know how to hunt them, how to clean them, how to cure that meat, how to get water, how to filter it, how to disinfect it. You'll have to know everything again, just like, you know, starting off as cavemen. Anyway, this all comes down to, you know, I launched this new company, Hang Tough Survival. You may have seen, I started with the um, little mini V17. I've got a prototype on me here these little signal panels and that's going well. So I'm excited. Thank you to anyone who's purchased one. One guy purchased four of them, but you can see this is a little demo. This is a piece that I was giving to a um, manufacturer because eventually this is, you know, it's going to take off. I can make say 10 of these a day, but if I start moving a ton of them, I need someone that can, Help me. So this is just a demo. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. It's on my eBay store. So this is project number one. This is something I've always loved because if you know the V17, 
it's huge, right? And throughout its history, soldiers in the military have been required to carry it. And right away they said, no, too big, too heavy. So they would cut pieces out of it and then sew on some sort of a lanyard or you know, paracord. So they had a mini v V-17. And I did a lot of research and I couldn't find anybody making like a mini V-17 like this. So I'm making them. And I've added some custom touches. I put this vent in here for the wind. And I'm using this, um, I call it a four. <laughs> I just made it up. Because I look at old stitchings on military gear that I have. Because I collect old stuff. And I saw this somewhere. So I, I'm using this four attachment. So that way it's got three points of attachment and it's tensions coming, you know, pulling off paracord. I'm going to do a full video on these so you'll be able to see what I'm talking about, but I'm excited about them and they only weigh one ounce. So there's no reason you shouldn't have this or make your own, whatever, but you should have these on you, on your body, not in your backpack, in a pocket. So I'm adding more products and I love this bag because it is simple and it works. Okay. So just think of the things that you could throw in here. Right away, I'm thinking extra magazines, you know, possum mentality as you're moving, grabbing things that you need, whether it's fire resources or anything you find, stick it in here. And it's got this beautiful two inch strap. So you simply, you know, it's on you. And to secure it, it's just got these half inch ties. And you can use the most use not in the world probably, right? Just tie your shoelaces. You know, I always wonder why is this, why is this how we tie our shoelaces? This is in the United States. But I've been overseas a lot and other parts of the world and they do it differently. But there's a reason why this is, you know, the most widely used knot in the world. And I'm a big knot person, so I've tried to figure out what is this that I'm really making? Anyway, just simple. So that brings me to Frankenstein. <laughs> That's what I call these. I create these little, you know, because I have to learn how to make this. So the first thing you do is you're going to spend hours, days, weeks, maybe researching something. And the quickest way would be for me to just, you know, get a seam ripper and take this all apart and then copy the pieces and I've got it, but I don't want to rip this up. This is very important to me that it's got the energy this is real. I don't know where this has been, what this has done, but I value this, so I'm not going to cut it up. So I do loose, you know, I lay things over it and I use this. This was a, just a multicam top. So I cut it up because I had to salvage some pieces off it. I'm always salvaging things, skeletonizing. Anyway, so this is a reproduction of this and I'm learning how they did their corners, right? How they sewed on their pieces here, their lanyards. So here they've got their X stitch. So then I've got to learn how do you make that military X stitch? You see that all the time, right? looks like a little X in the box. Then it's very interesting. How did they get this one piece to go all the way around? And if you sew on a machine, you know that once you close something, you can no longer, you know, access with the machine, right? Because it stops, okay? You'd have to be, a, be on a machine to understand, but you get to a point where you can no longer sew. It stops, so then you've got to say, okay, well, then I'd have to take it off, back it up, flip it around, come back, reverse stitch it, you know. And when you're going to make these, you've got to get a system. I call it the Henry Ford. For example, on this, I spent two weeks, and I'm still learning all the time, ways that I can, you know, expedite the creation of this. Meaning that it's, my grandpa always taught me, military, World War II, infantry. And he went on to be a contractor. He was a steel worker, but then big machinery stuff. And he would always tell me, he'd say, all right, let's go, grab that, grab that. And he'd stop me and he'd go, hey, I just asked you to move this to there, blah, blah, blah. Well, what you did was you went, you grabbed, you grabbed this, you put it here. 
Then you went over here and did that. Then you grab this and you put it here. Then you move this. Then you grab this and put it here. And so he taught me a valuable lesson. And that is you only touch it once. And that's a, I'm sure he learned that in the military. I don't know where he learned it actually, but I bet it was in the military. You touch it once. And so that's the philosophy here with this. The machine, when you're having to turn things, you have to cut the thread and then relaunch it. It's a bunch of motions you have to make. So you want to do things once. For example, now I've got this where I can make this stitch, brrr, reverse it, brrr, turn the material, and then do a full reverse, brrr, right? So I'm never having to reset the machine and do a bunch of extra work. So it's, a, it's, a, it's definitely an art form. And it's the Henry Ford type of thing. You know, it's a production line. So I'm taking this apart in my mind and then trying to recreate it here. And you can see, you know, these are my little monsters that I create. I'm like a mad scientist, but it's coming together. I think I've figured out how I'm going to be able to make this. And what I was thinking I'd do was make it out of maybe this M81. I just got this. This is military surplus. Beautiful material. It's um, cotton and nylon. You know, it's what this field top is made out of. Same stuff. So I was thinking of making them out of this. I've also got this beautiful World War II. This is a canvas bivy. And this is World War II. It's got a date on here somewhere. I think it was 42. But it's a big, long canvas bivy. So I thought, well, maybe I could cut this up and use it. But I'd hate to cut it up. At least it would live again. So we'll see. I'm playing with it. This is the example I was going to show you. Because these are the bags I've always been used to. That I collect. These haversacks. So this is, I think, 1944. U.S. military. And you can see the difference. I mean, look at the finish work on this. And the buckles. Again, buckles, right? And the beautiful snap on the back. See the simplicity? I mean, listen to that. Right? Secure. Simplicity. Beautiful. But you can see how different, you know, this is a finished piece. Versus this looks like I thought it was, you know, some handmade thing. But it is official. So they were ripping these things out. And I can tell already that you could have ripped out thousands and thousands of these very quickly. So it's just a beautiful bag. This is one of the items that I'm adding. You may have seen the um, Quick Dread, which is just a simple camo netting. And then I add the gauze, tulle gauze here on the top. It looks crazy, but it's strategically placed. And then it just has a simple shock bungee cord with a clasp here in the back. I'm making them, selling them on the website also. I'm adding a bunch of different colors. I've done videos, I think, on this channel, yeah, where you, I've showed you how you make them. I mean, basically, you have to experiment with it and just get your measurement right of the material. And then you simply weave the bungee cord through. So I'm making these. I want to make this. I've got some material coming. I want to make bandoliers. It'll be almost identical to this, but <clears throat> you know, a bandolier to put your magazines in. So that's exciting. I've got a watch cover that I'm working on designing because you don't want to get glint, any glare, reflection off your watch. So you'll see a lot of people wear a bandana or something there. So I'm working on that. Lots of things, but I'd love to hear in the comments if you're into the old ways. Because I definitely believe that the old ways are coming back to be the new ways. Look at the war that's going on in Ukraine with Russia, right? Trench warfare. That's the new norm. It's back. So I think everything old is new again, if that makes sense. Yeah, let me know in the comments if you'd be into something like this. I'm into it. I believe in it. I think the old ways are the best ways, and they'll always beat out anything modern. 